Okay, uh, do we have many people there or not? Should we give a minute or two? Uh, oh, I see we got 11, 12 people or whatever. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, well, we're not going to do it. I'll talk for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes. You know, on Google, what's wrong with it, uh, how to use it better, and, and what your alternatives are when it doesn't work for you, okay? And, and that's what really it's all about. I'm trying to get people to understand and, and know how to get the information they really need. And unfortunately, Google doesn't do that, and, and for many reasons. I mean, it's the best we got. But it, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not solving problems like we want. And, and, and what what uh, bothers me more than anything is that not only is not solving problems, but it's thinking people can't solve their problems. See, that's more important than, than anything. It, it is making you know if we're encouraging people to believe that their problems can't be solved unless they got a ton of money. Now that's that's wrong, you know, because they, they, you don't need a ton of money, you know, in this society to solve your problems. And, and, but you have to know your alternatives. And, and, and Google won't give you alternatives. And, and that's where I want to go. I'm going to go through, you know, okay, for about 20 minutes now. And, and then I'll put your questions in uh, uh, and, and, you know, at any time. And if I don't get them to, to you at the end, I'll, I'll, I'll spend a, you know, some time after after I go off the air and answering your questions, you know, right on my Facebook. So don't worry about that, uh, me not answering your questions. And, and if we don't get to your questions, you know, wh while we're doing the, uh, the seminar. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll answer any questions. You guys leave. Okay, now, what's wrong with Google, right? Well, I, I, I have an MBA in computer science and I specialized in databases and this is back in the 70s yeah <laughs> back in the 70s but most of you people probably weren't even born yeah when i started my my computer career and, and what i really saw is that information became so important and that was back in the 70s before the 70s nobody cared about information you know uh and then i and that was really the oil embargo started all that once we had the oil embargo now all of a sudden we had to worry about some country nobody even heard of <laughs> was bringing us to our knees, you know, because of oil. So people had to know about information. So I've been, a, and I started one of the first information brokerage companies in Washington, D.C. back, you know, in the 70s, you know, and went through the 80s, and, and it was a way to get information. Now, so Google, you know, man, it's great, you know, I build databases, you know, computerized databases and everything, and, and trying to get people external information. What's going on in the world, you know? Uh, and I was helping businesses, Fortune 500 companies, do that. Okay, now here's the first thing, uh, the first problem about Google is quantity versus quality. Okay, you go Google something now, you know, uh, anything. I mean, like, I, I Google a lot, you know, because I'm doing a lot of work for people buying houses and fixing up houses and stuff like that. So, put mortgage. Now, if you put mortgage into Google, you get 127 million, million. <laughs> what the hell are you going to do with 127 million websites, you know? <laughs> or you put in debt. If you have debt problems, you get three. 185 million <laughs> websites. Man, you're not going to live long enough, right? You're never going to live long enough to figure out, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, what's a good website. You don't know if it's some wacko in the basement of <laughs> some burnt out building doing a website or, or, or it's the best information in the world. There's no way to tell. So that's why you have information overload, and that's always been a problem, you know, with, you know, since we, the advent in computers, it's dealing with this uh, information explosion. And, and because, uh, you know, of the Internet now, we have so much more information. So now we have a bigger information explosion than any time in our life, you know, and it's, it gets worse. I mean, like, the, the data I've seen, like, you know, from... You know, from like the the caveman till 1950, <laughs> we, 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 you know, the amount of information that was generated then is sort of like equal to a year that we generate now, you know. So, that, and so it's growing exponentially and we have to learn how to deal with that. And that's why Google is sort of like our best bet. But you have to know when to use it, when not, and what problems there are with it. So you make informed decisions and you get the right information and you make the right options in life. I mean, right now there's a billion websites, a 
billion. I don't know what the hell a billion is. And I live in Washington where we throw away billions of dollars <laughs> like it's nothing. <laughs> and when I was first starting the information business, I'd go to the Library of Congress. And they had a couple million books. But that was the largest source of information. See, and I'd go there free and copy books and things like that and sell them to my Fortune 500 comp companies, you know, the, uh, the research reports that were copyrighted. So that was public information. You know? uh, but now you have a billion. You don't have a couple million. You have a billion. You know? And actually, for a billion dollars, I, I think if I remember correctly, if you spend a you know a thousand dollars a day every day since the day Christ was born, you still don't get to a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's just astounding figure. So you have that quantity problem. So you're overwhelmed and, and don't know what to do. I call it a Google haystack because then you got to find out you know uh, your needle in that Google haystack. You know? Okay, so that's one. Number two is advertising. Okay, what has become to Google? What has become Google? <laughs> it made Google the richest company in the world, probably, because they're selling advertising. Now we spend more money on advertising on the Internet than we do on television. <laughs> that's right. So it's more. That's what's going on. And that's not counting all the geeks that are out there trying to you know, figure out what Google's algorithm is so they could you know, game the system and, and get your website on page one and everything. And they're gaming that. You know. So some guy in his basement who has bullshit data, <laughs> figures out the al algorithm, and they're going to be on page one. You know? But all the time, all the money, all the uh, energy that's put into people trying to figure that out. That's why you, you, it's like you coming to uh, a gunfight with a knife. You know, you have no way of winning. <laughs> you can't. You know? And this is what, so it's all money. So now that there's so much money involved, people make money off of you. You know, because you're looking for something, right? Now, uh, I, I did a, a, a sample search. I put in business grants because a lot of people want to start businesses and they think there's grants out there. So I do a lot of custom research reports for people to show them the real grants out there. Because if you go to Google now and you put in business grants, I mean, I look at the first two pages. You know, like on the fir first page, there's 17 items described. Uh, okay, 17. First of all, half of them are people selling you loans. So that's why you're going to get and, 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 and believe that, oh, boy, there aren't no grants or something for me, so I better take out a loan. You know, that's not right. You know, and that's not true. These people are spending money to get their website on page one, two, three, four, five. You know, the good stuff is on page 35 that you'll never get to. You know, so that's it. You know, and the other things of the 17 websites, okay, more than half of them are, are, are people selling you money. Okay, so you're looking for a grant for free money, and you got people there <laughs> telling you, hey, I'll sell you money. You know? <laughs> or another thing, what it is, is that, you know, uh, most of them are like SBA grants, you know, because people, okay, business, I want a grant or whatever. And actually, the, the SBA grants, that the, the, the grants that the SBA talks about are really for, <laughs> they're the most complicated grants I've ever seen. And I've been studying this stuff for 40 years. They're small business innovative research grants. And there's something, actually, there's states that give grants for you to figure out how to get that grant. So they're, they're legitimate grants, but they're not for the small business just starting out or something like that. These are high-tech ideas, and they're important, but it's not what 99% of the people are looking for when they're looking for money to start a business. So that's out of the way. But that's on page one. So you think that that's, that's the universe. And then, see, what the other thing that really gets me is the grants that they have on that first page are mostly by big corporations that give out business grants. And that, to me, is one of the biggest scams I've ever seen. <laughs> because you have these big billion-dollar corporations. They're giving out, like, $30,000 in grants to businesses, and five people get them. These are billion-dollar companies investing $30,000 in grants. They're spending probably a million dollars in advertising, so they get publicity that they, they're giving grants to little businesses, you know. And they get free publicity because they're, you know, picking five people to give $1,000 a piece for or whatever, and they get a billion dollars or a million dollars worth of publicity or more, yeah. And, and so that's not. You know, it's not going to go far. Sure, a few people are going to get them, but th but that's a lottery kind of game, you know. And, and it's so small. I mean, that's the thing. It, there's hardly any people using them. It's not where the action is if you need money, free money to, to start a business. So that's that's what 
you know, and that's what I see. So that's what it is. And so if you go through three, four pages of that, then you're going to say, oh, there's no grants here. I can't start my business. And that is wrong. See, and that's why I want people to understand about that. You know, uh, and, and here, you know, there's another thing about Google is that accuracy, okay, accuracy. And this is becoming more and more of a problem. You know, in our society, and I don't mean fake news. I mean, that, that's part of it, because now in Google, we got fake news and people going out, you know, walking into pizza parlors with, with machine guns or whatever, you know, because of they, got some, they read something, you know, that was fake news on, on the Internet, you know. But that's a different issue. What I'm talking about is that people don't know anymore. So you're looking on Google and trying to search for uh, uh, an answer to something or whatever, and whatever, well... <laughs> Most of that stuff is not right, no matter who they're talking about anymore. Just that's the way the system is nowadays. It's too complicated out there. Nobody can keep it up. Anybody who knows is, is an expert really just knows about yesterday. They don't know about today or tomorrow because that's changing all the time. Now, if you Google right now, oh, see, I'm telling you to use Google <laughs> after I'm bad them. They are good at something, you know? <laughs> but you have to know when and where. Okay, if you Google, like, scientific journals wrong, you will see there's a whole bunch of very credible studies that show 60% or more of the studies that you read, like, you know, bananas are going to make you smaller or something like that. You know. Okay, see, over 60% of those studies are wrong. They could never reproduce the results again. Right? <laughs> so, it's just like some guy at a bar. I don't know if you remember Cheers, that guy at the end of the bar, the, the postman who always had an ad or an answer for anything. He, he was sort of like, and, and that's what they're doing. They think it's, that may be right for somebody, but it, it, it's not right anymore. You know? And it's, you know, after the, the day is published, just their sample and that was it. So that's why. So if you have 60% of the best scientific research in the world is wrong, wow, and we're believing these people off the street about what's right or wrong, you know, to do. That's what I mean about grabbing your life, you know, and not believing what these, some experts do because they're probably wrong. But see, the problem with the experts is they can't charge a lot of money if they don't convince you that they know what they're doing. Right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They have to. And I was talking to somebody who, who uh, actually was a, a book I'm reading, and he went to, to be a business consultant, went to one of the big business schools. Yeah. And, he was, and then he was going to go to these uh, consulting businesses where they charge a lot of money for you to, to say how to run a business. And, and he said uh, yeah, that he can't tell clients he knows the answer. He said, that's absurd. Nobody does. You know, and he says it in such a great way. He said, if, you're, if someone convinces you they think they know the answer, that's the first clue you know they're lying. <laughs> and they can't. And he couldn't do that. And his boss said, well, no, we charge these people $500,000 a year. <laughs> they have to believe you know the answer you know, when you don't. So they can't. There's too much in the system to make them not give you the right answer or the, or the truth about they don't really know. I mean, look at Trump, the best experts in the world, the best statisticians, everything, said he didn't have a snowball's chance of hell, right? <laughs> I'm downtown Washington, D.C. You know, next January 20th, that sucker's coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> and no matter what anybody said, the smartest brains and everything said. Well, you look at the uh, the Wall Street Journal like a, a year before, I mean, a, a month before the stock market crash. Nobody was saying it's going to crash. <laughs> Nobody. These are the best experts in the world. So you go to your expert broker or whatever like this and say, hey, is it a good time to invest in the stock market? Yes. <laughs> Even when it's down? Yes. Even when it's up? Yes. Why? Because that's where he makes money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it, it, it's important. So you have, uh, uh, by the way, somebody said, somebody missed the first point of this. But, I, I, you know, this is going to be online, so you, you can watch the whole thing again. So number one was uh, quantity. Number two was advertising. Okay, number three was, you know, uh, accuracy. And, and I don't know, I'm, I know, you know, when you read stories or something, so these blogs that say, if you want to know the best way to do something, 
you get some blog that has figured out you're searching for that, so they're going to have the five best ways, you know, to poke your eyes out or something like that, or to make a million dollars with elephants, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And all they're doing is getting that headline. It's clickbait for you to think that they're not an expert in how to treat elements, elephants. No, they're an expert in how to get <laughs> this search engine to get their, you know, article or their blog on top, you know. That's what it's all about. And then you have blogs by companies are selling you something, so they have this little blog because then they, you know, able to get more in the search engine and, and, and get up on stuff, you know, higher in the ratings because they have a, an official blog. No, their official blog is to sell you something, you know. So it's not. So that's why, I mean, I, I remember, you know, uh, I don't read the paper as much anymore, but if, you, if there's a story about you or something you know very well, like, uh, uh, appears in, in a, a blog or in a newspaper or something, you read that story, you know, and you'll see the first paragraph is probably right, second paragraph is probably half right, and then after that it gets real mushy. <laughs> There's not much credibility in it. That's because you know. So now we're reading everything we read, we don't really know about, so we trust these people, you know, and they can't be right. You know, and because it's just too hard to be right. I mean, look at it. The best experts in the world are lucky if they're right a third of the time. <laughs> then you have to take that into consideration in what you're doing. So uh, it's accuracy a problem. Okay, the fourth thing is you have to know the right questions to ask when you search Google. Right, see, this is why I wear question mark suits. <laughs> Actually, I have a new way now, question mark suit. Yeah, I don't know if you know Spoon Flower. They made fabric, and I just sell them a graphic of, hey, I'm on purple with you know, yellow question marks and green question marks, and you know, for like next to nothing, they, they, they give me a couple yards of fabric, and they send it to <laughs> Vietnam, have the suits made. You know, it's terrific. Uh, but anyway, so it, it's you don't know the questions to ask. Like if you're looking for a grant, okay, well, you know, I mean, I, I understand, you know, and this is why I try not to use the word grant. I try to use free money because, like, in the government itself, only 20% of the free money that the government gives out is called a grant. Only 20%. And most of that is going to other government agencies, usually local agencies, state agencies, stuff like that. You know, so they're not even going to you. So, but that's only 20%. 80%, you know, over a trillion and a half dollars is given out, and it's not even called grants, and they're giving out more money than ever before. So that's the problem. See, and it's hard. I mean, you don't, I mean, nobody knows. You know, I mean, it's hard. You're going to something you really don't know a lot about. You're asking the wrong question. That's why, to me, uh, I always started wearing the question mark suits. The reason I did is the answers are easy. You Google, you get 150 million answers, right? But if you don't answer, ask the right question, you're screwed. You know? <laughs> and see, what happens, I think that, that people have something to do in life, you know, and, and, and they're trying to do it in life, and they're putting in, oh, I need a grant to do this, and they say, God, there's nothing there, you know, or, or it's only going to uh, um, state, local governments or something. Well, that's not the right question to ask, see, and that's it. So that's the fourth thing. Now, here's the fifth thing that really ticks me off. You can't call Google. <laughs> phone in the office I, <laughs> unless you're going to buy a billion dollars of advertising there's no way to call Google to find out what they're searching in there. Okay, if I want to start a business, what's the real thing? Because you have some bean counter back there or algorithm decide what to categorize things as, right? So you have to know that, but you don't. <laughs> Only they know it. You know, and especially me, what I see is that uh, it, it's some 22-year-old, you know, uh, kid just out of, high, out of college uh, developing that algorithm, how they're sorting these things in Google, and I'm a 73-year-old guy who I would never think like a 22-year-old, right? <laughs> so how am I going to figure out? That's what I think all the instructions to things <laughs> are written by 22-year-olds at, at these you know, high-tech factories, you know? And a 17-year-old guy, I, I can't figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> That's why, you know, 22-year-olds don't even use, uh, you know, uh, how-to manuals or whatever. Uh, but us old guys s still seem to rely on it. So you can't uh, call Google to see, hey, what should I search for? What's the best thing to search for on that? 
So you don't even know the questions to ask. So you'll put in grants and maybe play around for somewhere, and you and you'll waste an hour or two doing something, you know, and because you'll get attracted. It's sort of like a cool bookstore, you know. Oh, and you lead this aisle and that aisle and whatever, uh, and still, you know, not find anything. Okay, but if you know alternatives, like here's the number one alternative I think is great. It's 211.org. 211.org. Okay, now if you're looking for free help, you're looking for free money, that's all they have in that database. It's only free stuff. <laughs> and it's really for nonprofit organizations. It's all the stuff. See, the people that don't have advertising money. See, what Google specializes in is people have advertising money because they'll give them advertising dollars to get them up on the first page. Okay, 211.org is a nonprofit organization you know, uh, that only identifies in their database people who give out money for free or people who give out free help. Okay, that's all that's in there. And the neatest thing about it, too, you could call them. <laughs> so if you don't know what to call, like you put in a grant, no. They probably don't because I use it a lot. It is uh, financial assistance, yeah, uh, is the word to use for them. You know? But you don't know that. So you put in a grant, you get nothing. So if you get nothing, you have a call. You know, and the people are on the phone 24-7 to tell, oh, yeah, and they'll give you the information over the phone. Man, <laughs> where have you seen that before if they're not particularly, unless they were charging $100 an hour for the service? Yeah. Now, that's incredible to me. Yeah. And, and, and it's in every country, in every city. It's actually only about 97%, I think, of the cities around. And... Uh, um, but it's just a wonderful thing. And doing the snow here. I mean, I call them up and see how to get my sh snow shoveled for free. Okay. I made too much money to qualify, but they did have groups that come out and shovel your sidewalk. You know, so anything. I mean, you're looking to fix up your house. You know, you're looking, or grandma's stuck, you know, and, and needs help with something. I mean, it's a place you want to start a business. You call them because they'll, they'll, they'll show you organizations that help people start businesses for free. Yeah. You know. And they're the kind of people that are in that database. So that's another thing. Now, the other thing, you know, about all this, I think a, a way to deal with Google is, remember, uh, .org and .gov. They're the ones. So any Google search you do or something like that, you know, if it's .com, just let it pass. .net, let it pass. I mean, there may be good ones or whatever. I can't judge. But, you know, for, for you know, Simplicity sake, if it's a .gov or a .org, it's going to be either a hell of a deal or free. Because, see, they're not making money off you. See, all the other people on Google are making money off you. They can't stay in business and, and, unless they get money from you, okay? So that's why they, they'll be your friend. They'll be so nice to you when you contact them because they need money to survive. And they have to get it from you. These other people already got the money. They're going to get the same money, amount of money if they help you or not. <laughs> so that's why sometimes you have to do a little harder work to get a hold of them because they're not, their livelihood isn't based on you know, bleeding you of every penny. <laughs> and so they're getting paid whatever. So that's why it takes work on, on the consumer's part to find these people. And so you have to do a little work, uh, more work, you know, uh, to deal with it. So that's two one one, and and you know, just try to concentrate on dot gov, g o v, or dot org, o r g. And that means a nonprofit organization. Now you may have to pay, but still, again, uh, it's going to be a lot less. I mean, because it, it, that, that's just how the system is. People are working for different things there, and I, and I think more and more of our countries going towards that, but that's a biased opinion. Okay, another thing here is experts that are available. See, if you can find an expert that knows all this stuff, see, you're diving into this the first time, okay? There are experts who know all this stuff where you live. See, they know it. And a call or an email or just drop in to them will save you hundreds of hours on Google and finding something out. Like here for business, it's called the Small Business Development Center. So if you put, uh, I think the, the national organization is Americas, A-M-E-R-I-C-A-S, S, no, Americas, S, I forget if there's two S, I should have said it, S-B-D-C, Small Business Development uh, Corporations. 
Now, even though it says corporations or centers, maybe that's what it is, it, it's a nonprofit. That they get grant money from the state, from the federal government to help anybody, any kind of business. I mean, they'll help you. Inventors for free. People, you know, if you're an inventor, you're going on the, on the Google and looking for help with your invention, you're going to get these bloodsuckers who are going to get $10,000 out of you because they know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and they're practice, man. They know how to get you. Uh, these people do the same thing for free. Yeah. So why pay all this money when you can get it for free? And even if you don't believe it, I think you have an obligation at least to try the free one first. You know, why waste the money? See, to me in life is we don't know what works. You and I don't know what works. The experts don't know what works. So what we have to do in life is keep trying and keep failing to tell you the truth until we figure it out. That's what life is about. We're all, we're all working on a science project, <laughs> our life. Yeah, that's how exciting. So you're in the laboratory like a science, you know, a mad scientist trying a little this, trying a little that. And then one day you knock over a can of something by accident and you say, wow, that's sticky notes. <laughs> and you find something by accident. So that's what your life is like too, I feel. So you have to try all these things. But if you're spending money on every try, you're out of money before you find the answer. And that's the key, I think, in life, is staying and finding free ways to do things until you find the answer, because nobody knows about that. But there's people out there who will convince you, because they convince me over and over. It's a lesson I keep learning over and over again uh, about trusting other people, thinking they know the answer. Because it's human nature. We don't know. We're scared. That's why I wear the question marks. So, I mean, in my mind, is I'm scared as hell, and I don't know what to do. Yeah. And so people who know how to sell could take advantage of that, right? Okay, so you have the Small Business Development Center, your county cooperative extension service. Wow! I mean, particularly if you're in the food business, you want to be in the agriculture business, which is a growing, you know, urban agriculture or anything. Uh, actually, in finance, they help you with personal finances. Uh, they help you, you, you want to make, you know, uh, uh, banana bread out of your kitchen and sell it. They help you all these kinds of things, or how to get rid of moles in your backyard, or how to, how to, how to grow food in your backyard, and, and what grants are available to, to help you do that. See, that's somebody who's studying that 24-7, and they've probably been there 30 years doing it. So they're going to know anything you Google is going to be some huckster figured out how to get on page one that wants to sell you something. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody goes to sleep every night thinking about this. What I found, too, in the government, which hasn't changed in all this kind of stuff that I've been doing for so many years, is that these people, particularly in the government, then nobody even knows they're there. <laughs> so when you, you ask them for help, and they're dying to help you. Yeah. <laughs> because... Uh, yeah, you know, their wife's sick of hearing about it, or their husband, or whatever. And so you come with a genuine need and interest, and they're wonderful to work with. Yeah. So that's the county uh, cooperative extension service. Also, vets, and we have a lot of vets in this world. Yeah, I'm one. Now, what I found too that we now have county veterans. It's called county Co county veteran service offices, county veteran service officers. I think it is, uh, and they're in every county. So uh, find that because they help you help vets and their families get money and see what's neat. I have a study too that, that shows that they get twice as much money for you than anybody else can. <laughs> and I believe that's why you said uh, Gover gives talks at the uh, the vets hospital here in Washington. And because I think vets should be first in line for anything. Man, you're gonna you know, put your butt on the line for us or whatever, and not only veterans programs, for, but any kind of programs, whether it's housing, starting a business, getting education, all this stuff. So I think they should be first in line for everything. Okay, here's another neat thing, financial thing. If you have any kind of debt problems, again, if you Google debt, right, you're going to get 385 million websites on that, or Google this, HUD Counseling, H-U-D Counseling. These are free experts. These are, you know, in the community people, professionals or whatever, get grants from the government to help you for free. But they're not allowed to advertise. You know, so if you go to HUD Counseling uh, and find the HUD.gov that has counseling in it, you'll be able to go state by state and find all the people in your area to call and make an appointment for nothing, whether it's buying a house or, or figuring out your debt problems or whatever, anything, any of the financial things, emergency stuff or whatever. And you can also probably find them in, in the 211. 
you know, by, by calling them. So it's a HUD counseling. I mean, it's a first step for a lot of things, you know, in, in this country. Now, another thing that uh, is interesting that I see people don't realize, we still have libraries. You know that? <laughs> Even with the internet, <laughs> we're spending all this money on libraries, and they're wonderful. And you have to know how to use them. Because, see, again, you have a staff of people right in your neighborhood who spends all the time researching information. That's all they do. So they're professional researchers like me, but they're free. Yeah, I'm going to charge you money because I want to stay in business doing this. Yeah. <laughs> so you call up your library, and almost every library now has an ask a librarian. So you can go and text and things like that because uh, they know what's in your area too because they help local people with problems. So they know all that stuff. So they know what's available. Uh, in your city or county or whatever. And so, and, and, and they have databases nobody else has. Like if you're looking for a grant, okay. You know where the biggest source of grants are? Are foundations, you know. And, and foundations, there's about 150,000 of them that give out grants, okay. Now, 95% of the foundations don't have websites. Hmm. So you think everything's on the internet, okay? <laughs> well, 90% of the foundation money that gives out grants is not even on the internet. But it's at your library, and they can show you where it is because there's a private database that'll cost you thousands of dollars if you do it yourself. You know? <laughs> and you could go there to use it for free, and they even teach you how to use it because, again, it's a database. You don't know what the hell to ask. You know? How do you ask the question? That, too. So the way to... You know, know that that person is there, and, and sure, as uh, you know, somebody you're paying a thousand dollars a minute to, but it's certainly going to be a lot better than Comcast <laughs> or somebody like that that you deal with. That's in the private sector. You first one first. Okay, now here's the.
Okay, and the custom reports I'm doing, uh, you know, for you to get money to help or start a uh, help grow or start a business. Uh, I, of course, you know, I show you dozens of places to get grants and low interest loans and stuff like that from government and nonprofit organizations. But I think what's really going on in our country is the stuff that's happening on the internet. And, and what's neat about it, and, and I show you these non-traditional business loans and crowdfunding and stuff like that, all these things that are now on the internet uh, that help you get money for your business. What's great about them it's a place to fail and win at the same time. In other words, there's no guarantee you're going to, you know, like on a crowdfunding site, you're going to get money or on a peer-to-peer -peer loan site that, you know, you're, you're going to achieve your goal. But what happens, even if you fail, you win. <laughs> and that's the neatest thing about it. Because, see, you know, like on crowdfunding or even peer-to-peer -peer loans, so you have a small business and, and you're trying to grow your little business and, and maybe you need some you know, uh, whiz bang technology computer or something you want to do, or a new coffee machine or whatever. So you go on a peer to peer website, you know, uh, or a crowdfunding site and try to raise money for this thing you have to grow your business. So your business is going to grow and everything. But see what happens, even if you don't make your goal, you're contacting potential customers. People either come in your shop or people that you know, will hire your services or whatever, because they're the people that you're going to contact about the crowdfunding site. So now what's interesting, see it's easier to contact them for something like a crowdfunding site or, uh, or a, a, a sexy peer-to-peer -peer site than say, oh, I'm just another person trying to sell you something. You know? So it's a way to get attention and show people how great you are at, at what the heck you do. You know, so it, it's a door opener. I mean, so many people, I, I, I've interviewed maybe 700 to 1,000 people that use crowdfunding and, and these peer-to-peer -peer sites. And what happens is that because it's there in the public in a place that we'd never advertise and it's free, see, doing these things is free, absolutely free, <laughs> people come in the door, oh, I didn't know you did that. You know, uh, so that they're not so interested in giving you a loan or, or uh, uh, your crowdfunding site, but they want to buy what you have. You know? So they become customers or, or, or they become distributors. Oh, you have that? I sell those things. So I could sell them for you <laughs> and we could both make a lot of money. See, and that's what's so neat about the new ways of advertising or, or raising funds for a business or an idea or whatever. See, now you have, see, getting money in the traditional ways, you go to investment bankers or something like that or, or, or traditional bankers and they say no and you're on of the game, right? <laughs> so you get no leverage out of that. It's one person saying no, you go and knock on door, they say no, and, and the game is over. Here, you're, you're broadcasting, see? And so even if people say no, people are, are seeing this and you're you're showing yourself to more people you didn't even know to ask. So you didn't even know to ask those people, <laughs> but they, they were attracted by the side of it. And also, it, it's a way you know to have an excuse to market to these people. So if you're telling everybody in your neighborhood about your small business because you, you want to raise 10 grand for the new espresso machine, <laughs> that means you're actually doing, <laughs> you know, you're making a sales call, but it's free and it's showing how great you are doing this stuff. You know? <laughs> and they're actually more likely to, to give you money because they want to use your new machine. But it's, it's the same with services. You know, you're a contractor, you're, you're whatever you are, you know, and, and you go to like potential clients to raise money for your contracting business. So really you're getting sales too. And then people see because these are platforms are public, people who come to these platforms all the time, you know, just <laughs> for curiosity or, or look for ideas, they're potential clients too. So <laughs> that's what's so neat about the internet now. <laughs> it's a place you, you fail, but you're winning. Where else are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> you're actually sometimes winning more by failing because stuff comes to you you never knew to ask about. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the name of the game. We're all sitting here trying to think of the perfect thing to do and we don't know what that is, tell you the truth, until we bang into it by accident doing something else. And they, then we look brilliant because we did it. <laughs> but we never knew ahead of time. So that's what's neat. So there's always more than one way to 
do anything in this society. <laughs> and so that's why I'm doing these reports, custom reports that show you all the different ways and show you examples of people who do it these different ways and how to do it different ways. You know, whether it, it's getting grants or free services or stuff on the internet for finding investors for your business or, or raising, you know, crowdfunding money or even peer to peer loans, you know, which are cheaper than you'll get anywhere else. <laughs> and many times, you know, these things don't even ask for credit reports. <laughs> That's what's so neat about it, too. So it's really all about expanding the mind. And that's what I'm trying to help people do. Okay, I'd like to add something new to this report. Uh, <laughs> it's actually, it's a new way of getting money, actually. And it's a new way to invest in small new businesses, like to be an investor in the next uh, Facebook or something like that, or Twitter, you know, and you don't get left out anymore. And, and it's part of crowdfunding, but uh, it's, I've been following crowdfunding about three years now, and they've been talking about this, where the little guy could invest. And it's really equity crowdfunding. See, this is for you to buy a share of the company. See, most crowdfundings, when you invest in a company, you're getting a product maybe ahead of time. You know, somebody invents a new watch or something like that, and, and they need $100,000 to make it. And then when it comes out, you got one for $50 because you were one of the early backers. So you gave them the 100 grand to make the money. Uh, and, and that's still available and very popular, and that's growing exponentially every year. But, you know, how do you become an investor in the business? You know, or how does a small business person, you know, look for investors? Because now if you have to become a publicly held company, in other words, get people to invest in your business, you got to go to the Securities and Exchange Commission and it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees and stuff like that. Well, now they made it easier. Now, a couple of years ago, they started with what they called credited investors. And these are really fat cats, accredited investors. They're somebody making at least a quarter of a million dollars or $200,000 a year <laughs> or have a million dollars in income. And they're allowed to invest in companies. And I have a whole bunch of sites that in an earlier video, I told you about how to do that. Now, you as a small business could put your site, you know, could put your business there to raise money from these fat cats. You know, uh, but they have to be fat cats, you know, <laughs> so, so it's nice for the entrepreneur. Uh, but as for an investor or if you're looking for small investors to invest in your business, maybe you have a trucking business <laughs> that you're looking for small investors to do it. So this is how to do that. So you could look for smaller investors. Uh, uh, and actually, here's the rules here. Uh, now, people who are making less than one hundred thousand dollars could invest up to $2,000 in your company, you know, <laughs> or up to 5% of their income. So that's all they're allowed to invest in your company because they don't want people out there ripping people off or whatever. And people making from one hundred dollars to $200,000, they could invest up to 10% uh, of their annual income uh, in your business. So it allows you as an entrepreneur to find money. Now, this, um, this costs some money to do. All the other crowdfunding sites don't cost any money. So you put it on crowdfunding and, and, and want to you know, raise money for your business and whatever it is, a pizza place or, or, a, or a new game or whatever the hell you're thinking about. You know, that doesn't cost you a nickel to do. You know, this costs some money because it still involves the SEC, but it's a small way to do it. OK, I mean, it's a small thing. And they they really figure that it may be, uh, you know, one of the big guys in the business doing this Indiegogo says so about seven thousand dollars you could get away with. So but, you know, if you're going to raise 50 grand or, or 100 grand, you know, that, that, that's not bad to do. Uh, so that's, you know, that's really interesting, I think, you know, uh, to consider uh, no matter what kind of business you have uh, or if you want to look for the next you know, big deal to get into because see before when all the companies, uh, you know, didn't go out to big investors, all the fat cats. So you had to belong to a country club to get in on this game, you know, <laughs> or already be a fat cat to get in. So here is a way for the little guy to, to invest in the beginning uh, stages uh, of some big, you know, hot company someday. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, here are the big players in the game. Uh, one is Indiegogo. Now, they're already in the crowdfunding business, and they're like number two almost in the business uh, after um, Kickstarter and GoFundMe. So that may be three or something. Uh, I don't know exactly how many, how, how they count and stuff like that. It depends. So uh, they're one of the top three, uh, but they're the only one in this equity. And I feel that they're a good place to start if you're thinking about this because they're, they're really keyed in on the little guy. The other people are less keyed in on the little guy and already deal with the fat cats in one way. Now here, we funder. They have another way. You can look at these websites, see the kind of things they're going to I mean, People are going to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, <laughs> from people off the internet who are investing in their business, you know. So it's all just a piece of paper they're looking at, you know, uh, to get this money. Here's another one. Seed Invest. You know, that's another one of these people. So that, I got about 45 big ones, republic.co, uh, that do this. So it, it's really, this is just started. You know, it's just, just a couple of months old. So it's going, going. They're already raising millions and millions of dollars this way. So it's something to keep an eye on. This is the future, old way we're thinking about banks and hanging around broker's office and things like that. That's old school, yeah. And this stuff is new and growing. Now, another thing about crowdfunding, particularly as an entrepreneur or business uh, partner, a uh, uh, business person looking for money to do something. Remember, crowdfunding like this, whether it's non-accredited investors or the strict crowdfunding that you're looking for, you know, you got to buy a new truck for your business or something like that. Uh, you know, it, 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 it can't hurt to do it because when you do something like crowdfunding like this, it, it expands your market. So you now have, say, you need a new truck because your business is growing, okay? And so you're looking for people to invest uh, uh, $100 or whatever it is. And, you know, so you get up a down payment for a new truck and whatever. And what do you give? I, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> You give them swag. I mean, it's like NPR gives, <laughs> you know, coffee mugs and stuff like that. Or you can give them a ride in your truck. <laughs> but if you make a product, you can sell them the first product or something like that. Or, or you have something you could dream up to do because they're helping a lot of these crowdfunding things like that are really to help the community. You know, uh, and there's actually peer-to-peer -peer loans where you can get loans like this too. So make sure you, you see the loans because people could loan you the money and it doesn't take all this paperwork to do that, you know, seven grand, and you could get a loan and pay it back. So look at that. But in the crowdfunding, or even the loans, tell you the truth, where it costs absolutely nothing for you to do this, you know, uh, but it's a way to market. It's a way to get customers. Say so maybe all your customers, you know, if you're in the uh, transportation business or whatever, uh, you know, uh, um, trucking business. So all the people, you could ask them for money, for loans, because you're doing a fundraising campaign. So they become invested in your business. If you're going to open a coffee shop or something, you go to a community there who are potential customers. They become your marketing people now because, hey, yeah, this guy's a good guy. You know, he's a good business and he's going to grow and I lend him money. And, and, and so that's the word of mouth thing. And, 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 and also it's a way to get publicity for your business too, because a lot a lot of times, you know, oh, I'm Joe the trucker, you know, who cares about that? You know, but Joe the trucker is trying to raise down payment money for a new truck. <laughs> he becomes a good local story or whatever. Or in, in your trade magazine, like all your potential customers, maybe the shippers, you know. So shipping magazine will, will write about you because you're this ingenious person who's using, you know, crowdfunding to, to get a down payment on a new truck. So he could help the shippers out there, you know, in a more, you know, economical or faster, better way, you know, to, to do their business or whatever. So that's why it, it, it's great. You build up loyalty, you build up customers, you know, uh, and that's why to me, most of life is just energy. You have to have the energy to do something. You have no idea what's going to work. Neither do I. I'm guessing every day. I try a thousand things. 99% <laughs> of them fail. <laughs> will fail. <laughs> but you have to have the energy to do it because you don't know what works. And that's why you have to do it with it doesn't cost money because if you're, you're going to run out of money fast and you won't be able to do anything. So look at these new things, particularly this uh, uh, non-accredited investor for yourself as an investor or, or for a way to ra raise money. And don't forget the other ways of crowdfunding, which is 
you know, peer to peer loans, which is uh, regular crowdfunding that I come and you have a lot of examples in this report. I, I got 20 or 30 examples of people who got money like this for their business when they didn't have a pot to pee in and they were able to start and launch it. So <laughs> there's always something new out there and who the hell knows if it's going to work and you don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to work, but you will know if you try it.